So uh, I would like to start with a small narration. Let's 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 go back a bit in time, where medicine was ma mainly based on your clinical history and examination rather than uh, your lab investigations and radiology. To the time when doctors were human beings and not Dr. Google or artificial intelligence. In a rural area, a mother gets a child of around a year old to a, to a primary healthcare setup with primary complaints of fever, decreased appetite and decreased activity. This child also has cough, breathing difficulty and noisy breathing. Also intermittent irritability, altered consciousness and seizure like episodes. The, uh, as usual the attending doctor is completely confused and but he takes a good history. On history he realizes that he has had, the, the mother has had severe, uh, three similar complaints in the past kids for which she has lost all these three kids. Also, this the, the parents were third degree consanguinately married. The doctor starts on various medications, both IV as well as oral, but to the sad that the pa parent, the patient doesn't show much of any improvement. And finally, the parents think that going to more conventional way of management, like going to gurus or doing branding or tattooing that they do in the, uh, in the rural areas, would be the next line of management and eventually the eventually the, the inevitable happens and this child is also lost that is the time when childs were lost without any reasons and now as we have evolved ahead now when i sit in the opd today i directly get patients with direct genetic reports doctor please tell me which of these genetic tests ha are valid and which of these mutations should be taken under consideration so we can just simply say that the high touch medicine has been replaced with high tech medicine. So is it really right? So are we really heading towards something better? It all depends where the gun is. And if the gun, you see a gun in, uh, in the hands of the soldier, you feel safe. But similarly, if you say in the hands of the terrorist, you feel a frightened and just run away. So it's a power endowed to you. And with all this in brief introduction, I am Dr. Kaustub Moite, an interventional pediatric pulmonologist with multiple attachments in Mumbai, Navi Mumbai and Thane and I would like to present this topic of clinical to genetic diagnosis in pediatric pulmonology. Why do I choose clinical to genetic? Because I prefer clinical first and then to collaborate with it, to prove it or whether to just match my findings, I, I, I prefer genetic diagnosis. So clinical, why? Because more detailed clinical history which is provided by the physicians helps for a better chance of determining the exact genetic cause of the suspected disease. So in this slide, the most important word is suspected disease. And how do you suspect it? Suspect by proper history taking, proper examination, followed by lab investigations and finally some radiological tests. So let's see how these uh, clinical tests as well as investigations have help us, helped us and these genetic tests have proved our clinical diagnosis. So directly coming to our case one, a 20 day old child, a male child preterm 33 weeker with birth weight of 1.8 kg, born of third, third degree consanguineous marriage. Again, the parents have had three sibling deaths because of unknown reasons. This child had respiratory disease at birth. So like any other neonatologist would do, a preterm child with respiratory disease had given surfactant. So there was some transient improvement followed by which again in the 12th hour again increased respiratory distress which further increased at 18th hour of life. So as you can see pre-surfactant therapy complete white haziness which after surfactant has relatively cleared up. This child is investigated to find out that total WBC counts have increased with increased CRP which is showing towards infective etiology also serial ABGs showed an acid uh, a, a metabolic alkalosis along with hyponatremia and hypochloremia. So just make note of all these findings which will be helpful once we start joining the dots. The tracheal aspirate for PCR was sent which was positive for Klebsiella pneumoniae and Acinetobacter bomani and so was started on appropriate IV antibiotics. The child did show some uh, response to the given therapy and so was extubated to CPAP support. However, this child persisted to have pressure requirements and the, and the, uh, and the hospital stay had significant waxing and waning courses in the NICU. On the day of extubation, as you can see on the left, the X-ray shows haziness on bilateral hilar regions. Also, three days later, you can see a frank 
right upper lobar collapse which is persistent even after giving positive pressure uh, non invasive ventilation so i went ahead and did a flexible bronchoscopy to find out is there any obstruction in the right upper lobe and yes there was no significant obstruction per se but i got a good bowel sample which was sent for culture nas originosa so again now comes the art of joining the dots so with positive family history multiple lobe involvement metabolic alkalosis hyponatremia hypochloremia so as we know metabolic alkalosis with hyponatremia hypochloremia with normal renal function test is something called as pseudo barter syndrome and uh, a resistant organism all were pointing towards cystic fibrosis so we went ahead and did some cystic fibrosis specific investigations first irt was sent but however this child was more than 3 weeks old irt came negative but our clinical diagnosis was so strong that we had to fetch towards cystic fibrosis and so we sent genetic test which was positive for cf yeah so what exactly is cf just a minute yeah so what exactly is cf so cf is mainly a channelopathy in which chloride chloride as well as sodium channels are not functioning as it's supposed to be function which causes increased viscosity in the intraluminal fluid which causes increased chances of infection so it it is treated by multidisciplinary management including mainly infection control respiratory management gastrointestinal management as well as sorry uh, nutrition and endocrinal growth so this was the first case in which genetic test has had had completely helped us coming to our next one is a 3 month old child a female child this was a term normal vaginal delivery with no peri no perinatal respiratory distress this uh, child presented first with respiratory complaints at 6 weeks of age with progressively increasing distress and fever on examination this child had inadequate weight gain less than 3rd centile had tachypnea at rest intercostal more than subcostal retractions air entry was bilaterally equal but bilateral fine crepitations were heard and this was the x ray as you can see bilateral haziness more on the right lower and perihilar region which was confirmed by doing a ct as you can see this was completely involving the right lower lobe predominantly bal was done which was uh, which showed culture positivity for klebsiella pneumoniae and pcr showed pneumocystis carinae pneumocystis carinae is not a common organism to grow in this age group in an immunocompetent child so in order to prove whether this this report was right or wrong we sent special stains which was methanamine silver stain which again showed uh, the presence of these organisms and so immunological workup was done and to a surprise immunological workup showed low levels of igg iga as well as igm as well as lymphocyte subsets showed significantly low t cell as well as nk cells count so this was a t minus b plus nk minus severe combined immunodeficiency which was picked up at the age of 3 months on genetic testing it was found that it was a mutation in jack3 gene which was responsible for this skid coming to our next case is a 7 month 7 year 5 month old girl child which was brought with chief complaints of persistent runny nose persistent cough cough which was started since early childhood which is productive mucoid in nature expectorating more during the morning hours there were frequent nose blocks and the parents see that they could see a mass protruding from the nose while the child used to blow her nose on examination this child was underweight had mild tachypnea grade 1 to 2 clubbing no sinuses or lymphadenopathy and there was a sessile polyp which was seen in the left nostril uh, air entry by there was bilateral fine crepitations heard and on cardiac examination apex beat was heard on the right fourth intercostal space in the mid clavicular line and this was that polypoidal mass which i was talking about this child had grade 1 to 2 clubbing which can be seen in the right image and this was the x ray the most obvious thing that we can see that there is dextrocardia yes but also in the left perihilar region if you see very well you can see that there are these uh, shadowings or we say honeycombing appearances which could be seen in the left perihilar region on x ray we can grossly make out whether it is bronchiectasis or not but to confirm we need a ct and so we went ahead and did a ct pns and chest ct pns confirmed that there was an anterocoanal as well as ethmoidal polyp with complete obliteration of maxillary sinus and x ray and ct chest showed that there was significant saccular bronchiectasis 
seen on bilateral lower zobes. So again, we start joining the dots. There is prolonged history, there is persistent upper airway involvement, there is nasal polyposis and sinusitis, there is dextrocardia and there is bronchiectasis. So whenever we have all these complaints, in a wet cough child, we do something called as Picadar scoring in, in pediatric pulmonology and to our, uh, as, as we thought, we got the positive score of 8 in which the dextrocardia or the situs abnormality is, is the one which has the maximum scoring and hence with the score being more than 5 having a significantly high specificity, clinical diagnosis of primary ciliary dyskinesia was made and to prove this, we went ahead and did a genetic test which again came in support to our clinical diagnosis of PCD. Next is an 8 year old child, a male child presenting with dry cough, shortness of breath with exercise, poor weight gain, all beginning at the age of 2 years. At birth, there was no adverse perinatal events. Gradually, that they were, at the age of 2 years, this child started having dry cough, breathlessness, but there was no fever. As he grew, uh, by age of 6, he started having increasing frequencies of these complaints, 3 to 4 per year and there was absolute no complete recovery in between these episodes. And when he presented to us, this child was in severe respiratory distress at the age of 8 years. So he was a severely malnourished child, weight, height and BMI all less than 3rd centile. There was grade 2 to 3 clubbing as you can see in the photo. This child was tachypnic, tachycardic, room air saturations were 82 percent. Respiratory system show, uh, examination showed fine crepitations in bilateral inter as well as infrascapular region. And this was the x-ray. As you can see, bilateral diffuse uh, opacities involving almost all the lobes. So this child CT was done and to uh, this was a, a textbook picture as what the radiologist said of something called as crazy paving appearance and this was uh, this and in order to prove why was this happening we went ahead and did a ball to find this milky appearing ball aspirate which on past staining showed eosinophilic granules and the diagnosis of pulmonary alveolar proteinosis was made. This always has a genetic cause and in order to prevent this to happen in the next uh, next uh, the, 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 the newborn child for which the, the mother was already pregnant, a uh, genetic test was done which showed mutation in ABCA3 gene. So uh, the, the basic line of management, the definitive therapeutic way of treating pulmonary alveolar, alveolar proteinosis is something called as whole lung lavage in which this child was lavaged with almost 6.5 litres of fluid and as you can see the proteinaceous fluid which with sediments of protein accumulating down and as you can see with, uh, with time as, as the, uh, as the ba as ball was aspirated with time this started clearing up and this child was out of hypoxia. Last is this 4 month old girl, this is like an OSCE that, uh, that, that, wa that was seen in uh, our OPDs uh, a couple of months back. So this child had a papillar skin rash, a left axillary lymphadenopathy with BCG site swelling and erythema. So if you see all these three things in a 4 month old child with a BCG site swelling, you sh I'm, I'm pretty sure you all have the answer with you. Just to finish the, uh, just to ma make a complete uh, investigation, CBC was done which was normal, which no lymphopenia, serum immun immunoglobulins were normal, NBD DHR was normal, lymphocyte subsets were normal. But in order to prove that this was uh, something called as BCGosis, we did ge the genetic test which was positive for a mutation in IF in GR1 gene, which we made a diagnosis of MSMD, so Mendelian susceptibility for mycobacterial disease. So what is this? It is a rare inherited immune deficiency in which there is selective predisposition to weakly viral and mycobacteria like BCG or non-tubercular mycobacteria. Also other organisms like fungi, salmonella, listeria, nocardia or klebsiella mainly seen in childhood and it manifests with localized or at times disseminated infection. So once we talk about genetic cause of respiratory diseases, there are various diseases that we can, that we go across mainly primary immunodeficiencies, cystic fibrosis, primary ciliary dyskinesia, surfactant metabolism dysfunctions, idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis and many more. But everything should have a clinical background. We, we should be suspecting it clinically and only then we should be doing the genetic test. So my major take home points with this short lecture would be 
Taking and clinical workup always stays as the backbone. Genetic tests have improved significantly over a period of time, which gives us more accurate results as uh, we've, we've heard in the past few lectures, as well as the better the clinical workup and diagnosis you make, better is the chance of you getting the desired results from the genetic tests. And finally, I would say that use genetic tests to confirm rather than to search for the diagnosis. Thank you.